do is continue on with this virgin folio clock and what the first thing that we need to do here is we're going to create a new part and we're going to basically start working on the escapement so what we're going to call this one is is and if I'm spelling that wrong, that's uh, the way I roll because I like to be considered a designer and not a speller. So that's not a big, big issue of mine. So one of the things, first things that we need to do is take a look at, you have that first work plane that I used to create uh, the, the actual crown gear and then this to create the pin. So what we or what I want to do is create a plane that is at 90 degrees to this one here and how we're going to do that is is that we're going to you can come up here and you can click on this and you can say create a new plane on an axis and and that sort of stuff um, but there's also if you come into structure you'll notice that you have a few more options here and one thing that I find this kind of interesting is that you can take a work plane and actually start modifying it um, as far as its position and everything goes in this case you can rotate it 90 degrees and, and all that sort of stuff so the first thing I'm gonna do here is that I actually want to create a copy of the work plane so we're just gonna create it just a complete copy so and we're gonna turn the other one off so we can't see it now you'll notice that the sketch is still there so if one of the things I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna zoom out Gonna select everything. Oops, that's not exactly what I want to do. I want to select on that sketch, and we'll just start deleting out these elements. One thing we can do here is with the part one, instead of having to fight with the selection issues, is that we can just actually get rid of all that stuff and just start selecting things this way. So now we have everything set up with that work plane um, with no sketch on it. Yes, it was a bit of a workaround that probably wasn't necessary, but yeah, that's the way things go. One thing I am going to do here, though, is I'm going to come into this P1 and let's call this the crown. You can notice that if I double click shortly, just like if I click there, click a second time and pause, you'll notice that it allows me to rename these things. So what I do is just to keep things, you know, Organized in my mind, it's usually good to uh, label things properly with some some verbiage that you understand. Um, you can see that that name was not allowed, and I think the biggest issue that we had there was simply that I had created the wrong text that you would be able to use in here. So we'll do W one. We use. We'll use a camel case in this this thing, and when I say camel case, that means that the C is uh, capitalized, so is the S, but there is no space in between them, so that way we know what items actually belong to each other. Now, we're back to this guy here. We've got the escapement is the current item that is live, or the, the part of the model that I am working on that is live. So. What we need to do here is to take this plane and reposition it. So let's go into here and I want to rotate um, along 90 degrees along the U-axis. I believe it is the V-axis. No, that's not the one I wanted. So control Z. So it turns out that the U-axis is the one that I did want. And what it is using for the axis is this crosshairs that I had already placed on there. And it's going from the zero, zero point. Now you remember when I started the the crown wheel I started with it at zero zero so that makes it easy for the plane to determine which way it needs to rotate however one thing that some people don't know you can do is that you come up to this guy here position work plane so you can manually come in here and start playing with these wheels and rotate it so many degrees and pull it up so you can start placing planes where you need them to be um, and these all these distances and angles are um, fully capable of taking uh, text input so Let's just go back, and now that we have that, uh, let's go to a top view, such as this one. Now, what I want to do is start another sketch on this plane, and I want it to be on that, uh, that crosshairs. Now, you'll notice if I press down the Shift key, if it isn't set up to snap, I can press the Shift key and it'll snap. If I'm not pressing the Shift key, it doesn't snap. 
So I'm just going to by guess by golly here and the radius of yeah, four seems to be okay. So now we have a circle that we can use for the, for the shaft for the escapement. From this, it's a simple pull. Now there are a couple of things that, that you can do to maybe make your life easy as far as creating planes. Planes are what a lot of people use to start creating the geometry. You might not necessarily have a face or something to use. Now one thing I can do here is you remember that I had set everything up so at 65, I believe it was 65 is the outside diameter of this uh, circle. So now we've got that kind of set up. Let's go to a view that I like to see. And 60 strikes me as what I had for the radius of that, uh, of that, uh, or the pins, the, the outside circle of the pins. So that gives me a, a spot that I can start with. So let's just exit out of that. And this isn't how long I actually want that shaft to be. So what this has allowed me to do now is to create a work plane on the face. So we'll put the work plane right on the face and that's great. But now what I can also do is, is continue the face on as long as I want it to be. So in, in a couple of steps, I managed to very quickly place a plane where I needed it to be right at this point. So I can start creating some of the geometry, or at least know where I need to create some of the geometry for um, the escapement uh, paws or the arms. And we're going to do the exact same thing coming out from the bottom here. So again, I remember that the radius that I used was 60, so let's just pull this out to 60. And we'll hit the middle mouse button to say OK. Then we're going to click on that face and come up here and you'll notice that the work plane now is um, defaulted or this this icon up here is defaulted to the last one that I used. So I'm going to create another work plane right there. We're going to say that that's okay and then we're going to continue pulling this guy out. Now I'm not too concerned about how long the ends are because from here what I can do is I can actually come in and um, change the length of the shaft. The other thing is, is the chances of me needing to use this circle are pretty small. Now, let's see, was it that plane? It wasn't that work plane. I don't see that one being very useful. What work plane is that one? Here's the circle. So I can turn it off, but at the same time, I kind of need to know what that is for. So what I recommend everybody does is start naming all these uh, planes and sketches and anything else that you do so that you know what it's for. Now the work plane two, let's see, three turns off this guy up here and four is something that I want to have. Now work plane two doesn't look like it's going to be anything that I really need to use but if I believe, I believe that's the crown pin so we'll call it the crown pin and we can hide it. So now we know where some of these sketches and, and planes belong. Good. And so now what we're going to do here is I'm going to show you a real quick way that uh, you can start playing with planes and actually have them do some pretty interesting things. So click on a new plane. And in this case, I want a new plane on the axis, but the axis I want it to be is on this shaft. I'm just going to accept the defaults. Um, you can change where you want the U, V, and W axes, but we'll just accept the defaults. And that worked out quite well as far as the, the plane goes. But the one problem I have here is, is that I need to have sort of a, a flat tab come out at this direction, about 45 degrees, and then another one to come out at 45 degrees at the bottom, just so we can create these little tabs that click on these pins. So what we're going to do in this case is, is I'm going to grab onto that plane and you'll notice that it brings up this this uh, avatar here that allows us to start rotating it. So I'm going to hit there, click in here and go 45 degrees is what I want. And we're going to say okay and then suddenly I've got this plane that is at 45 degrees exactly what I want. So at this point let's just start sketching on it. And it wasn't necessarily the edge or the way I would like to view things but I'm just going to create a quick sketch of a rectangle. Now you can't see that because this this uh, shaft is actually here. So we can 
get rid of that shaft really quickly just so we can see that sketch and realize that it's a little on the big side here. So what I'm going to do is organize my view a little bit, use the arrow keys, you'll notice we'll rotate a view about 45 degrees, so that can be pretty handy at times. And I'm just going to grab that part of the sketch, we'll move him down, and we're kind of doing everything here by guess by golly. And that looks pretty good for me for right now. So let's bring back this escapement, which we happen to be working on, and I know I'm working on it because it is green. And I'm going to do a pull, but in this case, if I start doing a pull, it'll probably automatically assume that since it's in the middle, it's going to cut. So I want to add material, and we're going to drag that along here. So let's just go to uh, just a little past here, so that it looks like it would just be leaving the pin if the pin had just hit it, and rotating another one through. And we'll say that that's okay. Now there's a problem with this. You can see that we're at a... You know, we're offset from the from the shaft center, and I don't want that to happen. So let's control Z, let's go back a little ways here. And how do we find the, the shaft center in this case? Well, I think one of the best ways we could probably do that is that we will create my favorite, which is infinite construction cross. And I will find a spot. If you notice as I'm mousing over here, it'll allow me to get right at that center point of that of that shaft. So now we've got some construction geometry that we can work with. Now if I hide this and I want to start working with this sketch is I can start moving the sketch around so that I've got things lined up the way I want them to be. And again I'm doing a lot of this stuff really kind of dirty just to kind of get the point across as far as how to model some things up here. Um, you can be a lot more precise if you take the time. So again, we're going to show this guy, and we're going to pull, and we want to make sure that we are adding material. And we're going to pull him out, and you'll notice that he is lined up here pretty good. 17, now nah, let's go to 15. Not 25, 15. That yeah, should look pretty good. And I've added that little boss that I needed. Now, what we're going to do here is a little thing that I started wondering if I could do earlier, and it turned out that I could, and it was quite handy. So we've got that sketch is already on this plane, right? Now we also know that it is 60 um, for the radius from here to the pin. So I need to basically move that sketch down 120, and I need to rotate it 90 degrees. Well, you can do that because you've got the access to the plane. So let's just let me escape out of this, and we're going to click on the plane, and we're going to move the plane around. So first thing that we need to do is that we know that I want to drop this 120. Again, you can type these in if you want. And I also know that I want to rotate it 90 degrees this direction. Let's just type that in, 90. And we'll hit the middle mouse button and we'll say that that's okay. Now what has happened here is that you'll notice that I moved that sketch down that I had already created for that one pin. Um, I moved it down the, the amount that I needed to move it down. So I didn't have to recreate the sketch. And I also didn't have to do a whole bunch of patterning. Then I rotated the plane and it gave me what I wanted. So now I can use that geometry that I already used before in a different location again operation we want to add material and I want this to be 15 like I did before and we'll say okay at this point I can start hiding the planes and I've got all this geometry that I needed um, really quickly I found out that you know I can rotate the plane with the sketch have that geometry go where I need it to or at least that sketch go where I need it to and then reuse it um, so that's a very handy little feature is just being able to sort of manipulate the sketch and push it around to different spots that you need to. And at this point, you know, I don't feel that we really need to have this, this sketch around here. So what I can do is I can just right click and, and delete that. So I don't have any of this, this confusing stuff. I'm still going to keep these two planes here just so I have an idea about where I need to be in space as far as these paws go. Hopefully that's helped you out. It's showed you some of the abilities of using planes to 
start putting sketches and other reference geometry into your model very quickly and also being able to move a sketch around and, and be able to uh, take some of the geometry that you have in the sketch and reuse it in different locations on the model. Uh, next week what we're going to cover is the top area for the weights and uh, the gears or the other gear itself to help drive the um, clock wheel or the arms and at that point it's a frame and we should be able to get going pretty quickly. It's a little more complex than I, I thought it would be um, but nonetheless is, is that we're getting some really good instructional material out of this. So until next week, hope you enjoyed this and learned a little bit.